In movies, if an actor wearing a lab coat pretending to be a scientist looks at some green dishwasher liquid under a microscope and utters the words DNA, gene, mutation, evolution, you know what's incoming, superheroes shooting laser beams out of their asses and monstrous ladybugs on the hunt for unnaturally attractive 25-year-old teenagers. Thankfully, there is a thing called reality and I'm going to talk a little bit about it. So what is DNA? DNA is short for deoxyribonucleic acid, a compound found in almost every cell of your body, serving as a microscopic commander-in-chief. To understand how this happens, we need to look at the structure of DNA. DNA is a molecule, a bunch of atoms bound together. Like water, but far more complicated. It's a long chain of deoxyribose phosphate molecules forming a backbone with each segment connected to one of four different bases – adenine, thymine, guanine and cytosine. The base and the backbone segment together are referred to as a nucleotide. Realizing how annoying exploding heads can be, scientists labeled the bases with letters – G, C, T and the elder Futharkrun Ansus. Just kidding, it's A. DNA usually comes about in a twisted double strand with two chains facing each other, giving the molecule its iconic look you may remember from unforgettable movies like… the f*** remembers. Unlike water molecules, which are all the same, DNA can have countless variations depending on the order of letters in the chain. The sequence is specific to the individual, it is the same in every cell of the body, but differs from the DNA sequence of other individuals. The difference is even greater between different species. You can think of DNA as a train with wagons. You can shuffle the wagons around, change their content, but the train will still be called a train. However, it's not the kind of train you'd like to wait for to cross at an intersection on your way home to finally use the loo. It has wagons by the billions. Why is it so long? because it contains all the information necessary to build an insanely complex biological entity, you. Or a pig. Or a dog or a cat or a bat or a whale or a tree. The specific order of the different bases is what codes this information and serves as a blueprint for living beings. But seriously, they are just a bunch of letters. Where does at kasij attach attatij jeet attag say cow with massive udders or two-headed smurf. Well, DNA is inside cells, microscopic units of life in which there's a complicated and constant chemical reaction going on. Part of that reaction reads the DNA code and creates proteins which correspond to it. Different DNA codes make different proteins and since proteins are the building material of life, different proteins result in different life forms. The section of DNA responsible for a given protein is called gene, and the entirety of your DNA, which includes all of your genes, is referred to as the genome. So how does the gene become a protein again? Each sequence of three letters of DNA corresponds to one type of amino acid, like um, CTC is the code for leucine, CAG for glutamine, and so on. And amino acids, forming a chain according to the DNA code, make up proteins. Easy. You do it all the time without even thinking about it. Unless you're dead. Then it becomes really hard. The process by which the information in a gene is turned into a functional product is called gene expression. But you're not paying attention right now, you're doing the math. A cell is, what, a couple to a hundred millionth of a meter in diameter, while DNA, which is billions of nucleotides stacked atop of each other, can reach the height of cousin Pontus from Sweden. And him, we couldn't even fit in the mailbox the last time we tried. So how can DNA be squeezed into a tiny cell? 
First of all, DNA is very, very thin. And second, with the help of special proteins, it can be curled up many times over into what is called a superhelical structure. Which is just a fancy term for f***ing curled up. This makes DNA take up way less space and the process is called DNA packaging. Being packed so tight means that the DNA code is inaccessible to processes that would want to handle it. Much like that G.I. Joe figure at the bottom of the stash of childhood junk you've kept for some reason even though you're 42. Anyhow, every time the DNA is to be read, it gets untwirled, well, not the whole thing, just the relevant parts, and gets twirled back again after the job's been done. DNA packaging can lock down genes permanently as well, which is a good thing. It makes you possible. Ever wonder why you don't have skin on your bones or eyeballs in your ass? It's because your organs contain specialized cells which are not supposed to mindlessly grow everything. So even though most of the billions of cells in your body contain your entire genome curled up in them, they are not able to access every part of it. The sections of DNA they can use differ from cell type to cell type, which results in structural and functional differences. That's why there are no teeth in your liver and your face is somewhat different from your butt. So we have this incredibly delicate string that's about 2 meters long and 2 billionth of a meter wide, it exists in billions of copies across your body, it gets wound and unwound and torn apart and put back together, copied and edited 24-7, but its sequence of billions of bases has to be kept unchanged all the while. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? The technical information in this video was fact-checked by Christian Sabo, zoologist genius. Get it? Genius. <laughs> if you've made it this far, why not like, comment or subscribe? Or check out my other videos. I know it would make at least one of us happy.